Today I'm going to show you what's inside the cooling system in your car and how it works. Now the cooling system in your vehicle consists of the water pump which is over here, the radiator, the cooling fans, as well as the thermostat which is down behind the alternator. So now with the alternator out of the way we have clear access to the thermostat housing over here as well as the water pump over here. And some coolant is going to drip down. So now the water pump is free I can remove it from the engine block. So here we are underneath the car, this is a lower radiator hose, I'm going to remove the clamp and I've got the hose removed at the bottom. Alright, so with all the lines free, I can now remove the radiator from the vehicle. So I've got the cooling system laid out here, we've got the radiator inside of here, the cooling fans on the back of the radiator, your upper radiator hose, your radiator cap, followed by the coolant overflow jug, then we've got the lower radiator hose over here, there's a thermostat over there, and then of course the water pump that mounts to your engine block. So this here is where the lower radiator hose mounts on the engine. Inside there you can see a passage that comes from the engine. Here we have a bypass hose that goes out to the heater core. Now a quick overview on how the cooling system works. We've got the engine that produces a lot of heat, and we've got coolant that's piped through the upper radiator hose here that goes to the radiator. We've got the radiator cap here that's responsible for pressurizing the radiator. Then of course there's an overflow tank because coolant expands with temperature. The coolant will then make its way through the radiator here and get cooled off by the cooling fans or the vehicle driving through the air and then come down over here to the thermostat. Now the thermostat will control when the coolant is to flow and then it will go to the water pump which pressurizes the system and allows the coolant to flow through and then it goes to the engine. Over here we've got a separate circuit for the heater core to warm you up in the winter. This here is the thermostat. Its responsibility is to regulate the coolant flow going through the engine block that comes out of your lower radiator hose over here. This thermostat is meant to open at 82 degrees Celsius. Now the way the thermostat works is there's some wax inside of this membrane here and when it's warmed up it melts and that causes this entire valve assembly here to move down allowing coolant to pass through and go into the engine and cool it off. When the wax solidifies the spring pressure brings the valve back up and closes off the valve so that coolant cannot flow into the engine if it's cooler than 82 degrees Celsius. To demonstrate how this works I'm going to put it in a pot of boiling water. Alright so I'm going to pour some steaming hot water onto the thermostat here and then if we pick this up here you can see that the valve is fully open and coolant is now allowed to go through. Now I'm going to attempt to section this thermostat to see what's inside. So with the thermostat chopped off I can remove the valve portion of it. Alright so I've opened up the thermostat and you can see this is the wax stuff that's inside the membrane here that melts and causes the thermostat to open when it warms up. So here we have the radiator which usually sits on the front of the vehicle. At the top here we have the radiator cap and that's responsible for building pressure inside of the radiator to increase the heat capacity of the coolant. You can see the radiator cap has a little spring mechanism that activates when there's about 15 psi in the system to then allow coolant to expel into the coolant reservoir. Now your coolant reservoir is not pressurized or anything, it's just an overflow reservoir. Now because coolant expands when it gets warm, it's best to check your level when the coolant is hot. Now if the radiator cap is running below pressure, it'll build a vacuum in the reservoir and suck up all of the excess coolant inside of here to put into the cooling system. And the radiator works by running hot coolant from the top of the radiator through these small little fins to maximize surface area. It works like a heat exchanger where the hot coolant exchanges its heat for cooler air in the front of the vehicle before it exits down the bottom at the lower radiator hose. Now on vehicles with automatic transmissions, we have two coolant lines that run into the radiator, cool off the fluid and then going back to the transmission in order to make the transmission mission run cooler and last longer. Now I'm going to cut open this radiator to see how it looks like inside. So here's the radiator sectioned off. We've got the top here which has the coolant jacket that runs along the top of the radiator and that allows the coolant to go through the fins and work its way down to the bottom. It goes into this bottom jacket around this tube here. This tube is for the transmission line. It enters through the bottom here and it exchanges heat with the cooler coolant that is already cooled off from the radiator before going back to the transmission over here. Alright, now I'm going to cut the radiator in the other direction. So here's a cross section of the aluminum radiator. As coolant flows from the top of the radiator towards the bottom, it goes through these little tubes that are flattened and in between the tubes you have these little aluminum fins and as air passes through them from the fans or from the vehicle driving through air it cools off maximizing the surface area as it goes therefore effectively cooling the coolant in the system. Now it's worth noting from heat transfer class that the heat transfer rate is actually a function of the heat transfer coefficient as well as the area of the radiator and the temperature difference between the inlet and the outlet. Now the universal coefficient is the function of the geometry as well as the material of the radiator as well as your cooling fluid.
Now the water pump is responsible for providing coolant flow throughout the engine and cooling system. And this here is the water pump. It's powered by the serpentine belt that's driven by the crank pulley. It looks like we've got aluminum fins, an aluminum casting with a seal on the inside there and a steel pulley. It basically works like a centrifugal pump where coolant enters the middle here and because of the centrifugal force of the impeller spinning it spews out coolant around the side here and goes off into the engine. And here's where the water pump mounts. You can see the outlet at the top there where the centrifugal force will push the coolant back into the engine. Just as a comparison here's a water pump off of a V6 Toyota. It's much larger in size. And the purpose of these cooling fans is to provide breeze across the radiator and AC condenser to cool it down. Now most modern vehicles come with an electric fan. Older vehicles would have a fan blade that ran off of the serpentine belt to be powered directly by the engine. Now one thing I did notice is that the fan blades are a different design on either side. Alright now if I take off the fan blade here, you can see the electric motor. And of course once you grind off all the screws you can remove the electric motor. Alright and if I open up this cooling fan motor, and if I open this guy up here, so inside here we've got the basics of your electric motor, we've got these adjustable contacts here a contact the rotor and then inside here we've got the coils and then on the outside perimeter here there's the magnets. Now the hoses will carry coolant from your engine to your radiator. This is the lower radiator hose, it comes preformed from the factory. A lot of times it's reinforced with metal wire or fabric. And that's what the cross section looks like. It looks like this one's got a little bit of fiber on the inside. And that's pretty much how the cooling system works in your car.